All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and today we're going to take a quick look here at the uh, Steinhardt. I think this is the latest version of the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage GMT. Uh, so yeah, I think it's been about a year ago. I had actually the Coke version in the 42 millimeter case. I think these are 42 millimeter, 41.5 or something like that, in the bigger case size, and um, I sold it. Kind of missed my Steinhardt GMT, and of course with the release of all the new 39 millimeters. I was over there at the website checking those out. They're all sold out. I mean, you can't find those things uh, to save your life right now. I'm sure the price is going up on eBay as people resell them. But really cool because this model was in stock. And back when I bought my Coke model, these ones were really hard to come by. And they made some modifications to these over the years and kind of really changed some things that make them nice. I really like pretty much everything about this watch. I mean, obviously, you know, people are going to look at it and you automatically see that it's it's a, a, somewhat of an homage to the uh, uh, Rolex Explorer 2, obviously, just by looking at it. But they've made enough changes over the years as far as the handset, the dial change and stuff like that, that GMT hand's different. And I just really like the way it's come out. I think that even the bezel, um, as far as the font on the bezel and stuff like that's different and stuff like that nowadays. So for me, it's a standout uh, standalone watch kind of it really works by itself so anyways guys these are really nice watches these are running the uh, ETA 2893-2 movement in them so it's a really really reliable movement these beat at 28,800 vibrations per hour so it is high beat movement I think it's a 25 joule movement obviously these have the GMT complication you guys can see it on that orange hand there and also you have a date complication over there at the three o'clock now this is a GMT watch capable of two time zones. So because this is a non-rotating bezel, now I know the, the Coke models, the Pepsi models and stuff like that, they all have the rotating bezels. These models do not, so they're just capable of keeping track of two time zones, which is fine. I don't really keep track of any time zones because I stay in one, but I always keep my, um, my GMT hand set at GMT, which for me, I live in GMT minus eight, so in California out here. so. Very nice looking watch, guys. Um, these are running a MSRP of $550. I got this from, uh, I think it's Gnomon is the name of the company back there. I got it in the box. Really super fast shipping. They got this thing out to me in like three days after I ordered it, which was really impressive. Came straight out of Singapore. I know that Gnomon has a, um, a storefront in Singapore. I've seen pictures of it on the internet and stuff. Really beautiful store and stuff like that. I'll leave a link to their website down below, so... But these are just really nice. One of the things I know they've also changed on these was the bracelet. Now it's a very well made, made bracelet and very nice, but one of the big things they did was they have uh, changed the taper. Wow, I was wearing this thing outside doing yard work and stuff. I hope I didn't scratch it. No, it's just got goo on it. But they changed the taper. So this actually tapers from 22 millimeters at the lug opening here to 18 at the buckle, which is a really nice, good looking taper. I'll get it on the wrist and show you guys here towards the end. They're using this vintage style loom here on the dial, which obviously that harkens to the vintage GMT look. Now, a lot of people don't like it. It doesn't affect the glow. I mean, it still glows just like a standard, you know, loom. I think this is a super loom they're using on here. Super Luminova, Swiss Super Luminova. Uh, very nice, very nicely done. It's I, I like the look of the vintage loom. I think it adds just something to it. It's like, To me, it's not like the watch is trying to be old. It just has a, a loom that has just a different flavor to it and it looks really cool. Very nicely done here. So I'll go ahead and unscrew the crown, show you guys real quick how this thing operates. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with it. So first position is winding. And I will tell you these 2893s are so smooth, you can hardly even tell you're winding the watch. And you really have to stick it up next to your ear to hear it. So in the second position, this is going to be for your... Um, your date function. If you turn it backwards there, you guys can see the date changing. And if you go forward, that will move your... Um, your 24 hour hand there in one hour increments. Okay, so you can put that where you wanna have it. Crown is super, super solid on this watch. One of the most solid crowns I've felt lately on any micro brand I've ever had. I mean, it, there's really no wiggle to it at all. Then of course you pull it out all the way and that will stop the second hand hacking and hand windable, of course. Screw down crown on this watch. This watch comes in with a really impressive water uh, rating of 300 meters. Now it's not a diverse watch, but obviously it's an adventure style watch. I think the original explorers were meant as a cave, you know, a splunking or a cave adventure watch, which I don't really understand. I don't understand the GMT function with a cave watch and stuff like that, but it's just kind of cool. 
Very well done bracelets on these. They've always been nice. Screwed, uh, screwed links here. And I would suggest uh, they do use um, they use Loctite on these screws. So I would highly suggest using a little bit of heat on the back side to break that Loctite and then go ahead and undo them. And then when you put it back together, make sure you use uh, some of the lowest grade Loctite so that you don't have this thing rattle off you or have them come loose on you. Very important. So it's got the signed Steinhardt crown there. Very Steinhardt's always have this very flat case style. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the case back. These are all pretty standard across the board on these watches as far as Steinhardt goes. They all kind of look the same. But it gives you your rating. I think it's got the movement number on there somewhere. Uh, sapphire glass, Swiss made, Swiss automatic movement. You guys can see the buckle here and the bars. Very nicely done. Very well polished. Very impressive watch at the $550 price point, guys. I mean, it really is. It's, it's tough to beat uh, for the price. Very nice uh, Steinhardt logo there. So, great looking watch. If you guys are looking for a GMT watch, GMT function watch, definitely check these out. Has a great, great classic styling. I'm going to go ahead and fire up my caliper and we'll take some measurements. I don't think this is really any different than any of the standard measurements on an Ocean One. Uh, there we go. Oh, come on, Aaron. Uh, coming in a 40? Is it a 40 millimeter case on these? Eh, I think it's actually 42. Yeah. Go ahead and go lug to lug. Lug tip to lug tip. You're looking at 50 on this. Thickness of 13.5. Let me try that again with the side to side there. Okay, yeah, there we go. 41.8, 41.9. I knew it was a 42 case. And like I said, 22 millimeter lug opening. So... Great looking watch, guys. I'll leave a link to, to the Gnomon, Gnomon website. God, I can't even say that. Uh, Gnomon website. And you guys can go check them out. Let me go ahead and pause it here, and we'll get this on the wrist, and we'll go out with the loom shot real quick. All right, so here it is. I decided to bring it outside and get it in the sun for you guys to check it out. Such a good looking watch. Doesn't take much. Super Luminova on this thing really glows bright. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Look, I didn't lock myself out. All right, guys, there you go. The Steinhardt Ocean Vintage GMT. Great looking piece. I'll leave a link down below where you guys can find one of these yourselves. All right, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do. Please do. Thanks, guys.